All right, now we're going to focus our attention um, on the types of bonds um, that we have, and uh, mostly we're going to talk about polar covalent bonds. Um, ionic bonds is usually saved for inorganic chemistry, and covalent bonds uh, we talk about in general chemistry. I'm sorry, in um, organic chemistry. Um, let me bring up a pointer real quick. Okay, and the first thing we need to talk about is the difference between polar versus nonpolar. And when we talk about that, we have to talk about something called electronegativity. Now, some of you might have learned this in Chem 101, some of you might not have. It's a pretty important concept. Um, so we will talk about that and see how it relates to polar covalent bonds. First, let's talk about even what a polar covalent, a nonpolar covalent bond and an ionic bond is. Okay. Um, so basically, there are, there are two types of bonds. We know that. There's a covalent bond and there's ionic bond. Okay. Now, within covalent, there are two types. There's polar covalent and there's nonpolar covalent. Um, this down here technically should say nonpolar non covalent. So I'll add that in there. Okay. Um, and uh, it all depends on the electronegativity. So first you have a nonpolar. Nonpolar, think of this as like a tug of war, all right? And you have two equal, so imagine we, we took our class and we cloned our class identical, all right? And we had a tug of war against our clone class, all right? Technically, you would have equal strengths on both sides, all right? So the electron sphere, this electron cloud, is evenly distributed over both atoms all right that's non-polar you don't have a polarity pole all right and we're talking about this pole in between the bonds so a better way to show this is let's say i have x attached to x and this is our our rope all right and here are the two parties that are pulling it and basically you don't have a pole these electrons in this bond are staying equally on both atoms okay now imagine we um you know had a tug of war with a biology class all right um, chemistry, you know, are obviously stronger. Um, so uh, imagine we were pulling against another class. So let's say X against Y. Okay. Um, and the rope is being pulled more towards one side. In this case, it's being, the electrons are being pulled more towards Y. All right. And you can show this with this kind of an arrow. It's called a dipole arrow. Another way is doing this, it's what's called a partial charge. All right, this kind of symbol is a partial charge. It's a delta. It's a Greek symbol delta, which is kind of like an S and a D. And then it has a negative showing you that that's the direction that, that the electrons are being pulled. They're being pulled towards the Y. Okay, where in this side, you have a delta positive, delta positive. So this X has more of a positive charge because the electrons are being pulled away from the X. And the electrons now are closer to the Y, so you have more of a negative buildup or charge on Y than you do on the X. Okay, so that is what's called a polar covalent bond. It's still a covalent bond where they're being shared, but these electrons are being pulled a little bit more towards Y. All right, now imagine you have us having a tug of war against the Broncos. Okay, we obviously know who's going to win. They, all right, so here's us, X, here are the Broncos, Y. They now just completely rip the electrons away and have a full negative charge, and we have a full positive charge. That's an ionic bond. So that's the extreme. So you have nonpolar, where you have equal sharing of electrons. You have polar covalent, which is a slight unequal sharing of electrons. And then you have ionic, where it's a complete unequal share of electrons, and one of the atoms just completely rips the electrons away. Okay? Now, if I give you a compound, if I give you, let's say, a carbon attached onto an F, or if I give you like a sodium attached to a Cl, or if I give you a hydrogen attached to a carbon, all right, you should be able to predict the types of bonds the, the, these are. If it's an ionic bond, if it's a polar covalent bond, or if it's a non-polar covalent bond. And the way that you determine that is by the electronegativity. You need to understand the electronegativity of the atoms to determine what type of bonds it's going to be. Okay, so we will come back to this example to kind of uh, help us explain um, which types of bonds they are. Okay, so what is electronegativity? There's a lot of information on this slide that we really don't really need to worry about. Um, pretty much the electronegativity is the intrinsic ability 
of an atom to attract the shared electrons in, it says covalent bond, but it should be in a bond. Okay, we're not gonna worry about all of the numbers here. Okay, um, I care more that you understand this chart. All right, um, you will not be supplied this chart on exams or quizzes or anything like that. I want you more to just understand um, how to read electronegativity, how to kind of figure out electronegativity. All right, the highest atom, the, the atom with the most electronegativity is fluorine. The lowest is cesium, okay? So as you go from left to right, okay, you increase in electronegativity, increase in electronegativity. So you're increasing in the atom's ability to pull electron towards itself, all right? And as you go up the periodic table, as you go up, you are also increasing the electronegativity, okay? So this obviously is the lowest because we're going furthest to the left and furthest down. That's the lowest and the highest is fluorine, okay? So as you go to the left, it decreases, right? So oxygen is less than fluorine, nitrogen is less than oxygen, carbon is less than nitrogen, boron is less than carbon, beryllium is less than boron and so forth and so on, okay? I want you to memorize this though. Hydrogen, all right, hydrogen, for the most part, this is gonna be weird because you kind of see like, like the numbers, but for the most part, hydrogen is kind of equal to our boron and carbon. So imagine hydrogen kind of equal to carbon. And I know it. if you look at the numbers, it's not, but if you have things less than about three or four, they're pretty much equal. Okay, so I want you to just kind of memorize hydrogen and carbon for the most part are equal in electronegativity. Okay, so, uh, also hydrogen and boron. So like all three of these are pretty much equal. All right, there is a little bit of a difference between carbon and boron, but it's very, very slight. Okay, now if you get to five, see here there's a difference of one electronegativity. This is two, so there really is not much of a change in between them. Same thing for boron and iodine, um, but they are a lot less, but it is dropping. If you notice, it is dropping. So iodine is less electronegative than bromine. Bromine is less than chlorine, but it's a very slight change. Okay, but for the most part, hydrogen and carbon, even though the numbers aren't matching up, I, I still want you to memorize these are equal to each other. Hydrogen and carbon, for the most part, are equal in electronegativities. Okay, that's the only one, the only thing I want you to kind of know. But the closer you are to fluorine, the more electronegative. Okay, so if we go back to the, one of the last examples, all right, if we have, um, let's say we have uh, like a carbon attached to a carbon. This is not one of the examples, but carbon attached to carbon. They are equal atoms. So they are equal in electron and, and negativity. So neither one of them is gonna pull more than the other one. So this is equally shared. So this is a non-polar covalent. I'm gonna put NP for non-polar covalent for shorthand, so I don't have to keep writing it out. Okay, so if you have the same atoms, it doesn't matter if it's fluorine and fluorine, if it's hydrogen, hydrogen, if it's chromium, chromium, whatever it is, it's gonna be equal. Okay, now let, let's look at carbon attached to a hydrogen. Okay, carbon and hydrogen, are going to be, so I just told you they are equal in electronegativity, therefore they are equal pulling, therefore this is a nonpolar covalent bond. Okay, now let's look at a carbon attached to a fluorine. Well, fluorine is much more electronegative, a lot more electronegative than carbon. So fluorine is gonna pull the electrons more towards itself. Okay, so you're gonna have a partial what charge on the fluorine? You have a partial, once again, I'm asking you as if I can hear you, it is a partial negative and carbon is a partial positive. Because fluorine is more electronegative, it has a higher intrinsic ability to pull these electrons towards itself. So now I have a polar covalent bond, polar covalent, all right? The last example I gave you was a sodium attached to a chlorine. All right, here's sodium. Here's chlorine, one is way to the left, the other is way to the right. The further these get from each other, the more pull. Chlorine is way more electronegative, right? Almost by two, actually like 2.1 is the difference. So these electrons, the chlorine just rips the electrons away and you form a full negative positive charge for ionic bond, okay? That's how you use this table, the electronegativities. You don't really have to worry about the numbers Okay, because you can pretty much figure it out. If I have a nitrogen attached to a fluorine, what's it gonna be? It's gonna be polar. 
Okay. Now, I would never really ask you a nitrogen and a chlorine unless I gave you numbers, because you'd be saying, well, those are kind of equal, so wouldn't it be nonpolar? And yeah, but there's a little bit more to it than that, which we aren't going to get to in this class. I just want you to be able to like to see this um, and kind of have an idea. So if I give you, uh, you, you know, have an idea of where things are. So if I give you like an oxygen attached on the iodine, all right, pretty obvious that this is going to be a polar bond. Okay, oxygen's closer to fluorine, so it's more electronegative. So that's a partial negative. Your iodine is a partial positive. Okay, so if you have any questions, we'll talk more about it in class, but that's kind of how I want you to kind of understand it. All right, so based off of the electronegativities, you can figure out if it's going to be a nonpolar covalent, a polar covalent, or ionic. Okay, um, these, I believe they, so this is exactly what I just said. This is just kind of a summary. Nonpolar is where the, the electronegativities are the same. Polar covalent kind of gives you a numbering, like I kind of talked about numbering. If it's less than two, it's going to be not polar. If it's greater than two, don't worry about the numbers. Like I said, I'm not going to give you the values. I just kind of want you to understand as it gets closer to fluorine, it's more electronegative. Okay. So not much there. Now you're going to see this throughout the book, these kind of these electrostatic potential maps. It's basically a color coding kind of showing you where the electrons are are around okay the more red it is the higher the electron um, count or like the density okay and the more blue the le the more less or the less electrons are around it okay so here's your oxygen so th this molecule is this one oxygen is more electronegative okay if you look on the periodic table oxygen is more electronegative than carbon how do i know that oxygen is closer to fluorine it's further to the right that's basically all you need to do. So the electrons are going to be hovering around the oxygen, making your carbons and your hydrogens more positive. That's why they're a little bit closer to the bluer color, the kind of green in this case. Okay. If you have an ionic bond, all right, your carbon is a full negative charge in this case, very red around here, where your lithium pretty much is a positive charge. All right, so that's why it has the bluish charge. So you're, you're going to see these maps th th throughout the book. I don't really use them. I'm really not going to talk much about them. But when you see them, at least you kind of know what it's trying to tell you. All right, um, that's the end of this video. We'll talk about acids and bases on the next video.